Hi guys and girls, I'm Karel Segers from the store department and in this video, no trips to sets or exotic locations. We're going to cover two topics from the safety of our home studio. First, I'm going to try and give you an answer to the question that was the number one question for the immersion screenwriters when I conducted a small poll and you saw the list of um, what was on these writers' lips. Well, today we're going to cover what to do when you have finished your screenplay. After that, I'll be joined again by Near Shelter for the final installment in the logline reviews, uh, at least those loglines that we didn't manage to cover in the live stream earlier this month. So, what do you do when your screenplay is complete? Well, my first instant answer will be you rewrite it, because mostly when you think your script is finished, it is not. Um, but how do you judge? When do you know that your script is ready to go out into the world? Well, you'll have to have someone else give their opinion to you. That could be a friend. And it depends on where you want to go with your, with your script. Do you want a career? Do you want to earn a living from screenwriting? Which is a bit of a gamble, but you never know. People succeed. And if you persist, the chances will get greater and greater. But what you will do in that case will be different from those people who just enjoy writing and want to know where they are at. And maybe, you know, if, they're, if they happen to be really good, maybe then they can aim a little bit further and enter the professional arena. So let's assume that you want to get objective feedback because you want to take it further. Well, you start with your friends, friends that are interested in film, friends that have some sort of understanding about writing, because that is a skill you need to have. And when you satisfy those, you need to up your game. You're going to try and find friends that are actually in the industry. And if you don't have those, you may have to network your way into the industry. And that can take years. While you are establishing those connections, you can do other things. You can spend money. There, there are services out there where you can get coverage fairly cheaply. For about $100 US, you can get coverage on your screenplay. If you want more in-depth uh, feedback and you want to have a discussion with an, a story analyst, analyst like myself, you're going to spend a little bit more, but you'll get feedback that will get you to the next stage. You'll understand better what the chances are with this screenplay and what you need to do in order to you know, go one step further. Suppose you don't have that money yet, but you, you would still like to know where you stand. You can join a group. There are plenty of screenwriting groups in most um, uh, metropolitan cities. You can join online forums, online groups. Facebook has tons of them, and there are people out there willing to read your screenplay. Now, the real judgment or the, the reality only kicks in when this becomes competitive, um, when you were to approach a producer or an agent or a contest. Now, of those, the contests are obviously the most accessible because they want your money. So you pay, again, a small fee, less than for coverage or for consultants, to enter that contest, and that will give you an indication of where you rank. Obviously, there are readers in these contests that don't have the same skill set as an agent or a professional analyst. So you need to take that result with a grain of salt, but it will give you a rough indication. You know, if you don't place at all, if you don't even make it into the quarterfinals, then you probably need to up your game. But if you manage to get in, into one of those final rounds, that's a really good indication. It means that you are doing something good, something right. And you can continue doing those until you, you know, reach into the higher ranks and again, be prepared to spend you know, $50, sometimes more, for a reputable um, contest. But at least then you know that you're in good company. You know, if you end up in those higher regions of the semifinalists or the finalists, you know that you are, you know, ranking among a smaller group of screenwriters than your peers who don't get listed, don't get ranked. So contests are really valuable and I have a, an article on the story department that I recommend you read because there are all sorts of controversial or uh, conflicting opinions in the industry about the value of screenwriting contests. Now obviously the value of contributing depends on the value of the actual contest you are contributing to. So you need to do your research. 
And um, here's a heads up, Immersion Screenwriting, which is the screenwriting course I designed a few years back, we are going to launch a screenwriting contest as well. And I'm going to keep it deliberately very affordable for uh, students of the course. That contest will be free. It will be purely to see how you rank among your peers. But this, the contest will be open to everyone. And to allow you and anyone who would like to finish the screenplay, if you don't have a script yet, or you have an idea, you haven't executed it yet, if you, can, if you enter the immersion screenwriting course before the end of June, you'll have six or even seven months to complete your screenplay before you enter the contest automatically. Uh, more details I'll give you here in the video on this channel. And in the meantime, you can check out the course, the contest and the details will be revealed very soon. Okay, enough for that first topic. Let's go to Near Shelter and um, review some log lines. Hey Nir, you ready for a few more log lines? Absolutely, let's go. Good, the first one is from Hips. And it goes like this. Patrick, who has struggled with the demon dyslexia all his life, finds himself at crossroads when he meets a young gang member who is trapped in the same vicious cycle. I'm going to read it again. I'm going to invite our viewers to work out where the character is, the event or the inciting incident, and the action that will then carry us through Act 2. Patrick, who has struggled with the demon dyslexia all his life, finds himself at crossroads when he meets a young gang member who's trapped in the same vicious cycle. So the character is Patrick, and this immediately explains why we don't use names, because names don't say anything. They don't promise any sort of quality about this character. Um, what follows next is backstory. He has struggled with the demon dyslexia all his life. You could say that may well be the character qualifier. So a dyslexic young man or you know, a man, we don't know more, so we need a bit more detail. Now, this is a clear event, finds himself at crossroads when he meets a young gang member. He just meets the gang member. The crossroads is just a fluffy way of indicating that now we're going into a new, new stage of the story. But you don't put that in the logline because it doesn't add any detail. A logline is very precious in terms of its word real estate. So every word you use really needs to add to the information you communicate. So leave that crossroads out because every character in every movie should be at a crossroads when they end um, their first act. So this is really the, meet, the meeting of two people with dyslexia. One who seems to be fairly ordinary, Patrick, and if that's our main character, that's a worry that he's, you know, if he's ordinary. And then the other character is a gang member. That's all we know. There is no story. There's only this meeting. And is this meeting in itself worthy of a feature film? Maybe a short film, but not, not a feature. I've seen a few short films about people, uh, minority members or people with certain um, very rare disabilities who feel isolated and lonely. And in the course of this story, they then meet, they find someone else that, that they can relate to because they find ultimately that they are sharing the same condition. So it could be that sort of story. But for me, that's, that's material for a short film. I don't see enough here for a full-length feature. Yeah, um, definitely. <clears throat> I, 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 I hate to echo what we've already said on many of the, these other episodes, but learn about the conventions of blog lining before you post. We've got a very easy to um, um, read manual under the formula tab on the top bar, um, and, and you'll already improve tenfold the, the formatting of your long line and, and the words that you use. And for example, of using the character name, you wouldn't do that unless it's a, a historical biopic or pre-existing franchise. It, it serves no purpose. And I would hope that Hips, if Hips has watched our earlier reviews, maybe he or she has now realized what is lacking. And um, if you're going to write a new version, and I highly recommend you do, I really encourage everyone to give it another shot. Don't post it as a new logline. Just go back to the original one and add your comment. The most recent comments will also rise to the top 
in that uh, relevant tab on the website. So you kind of bump it that way. But please don't uh, post a new log line. Yeah, the other thing I'll say about this is that you've also you described them as the same vicious cycle. And we don't know what that is. What is this vicious cycle that you're talking about? People with dyslexia, demon dyslexia, I mean, there's no cycle, no vicious cycle described mm. prior to that. So it's a bit, when you use the, the word the, you're insinuating something that the reader already knows and we don't. So that's, again, that's a bit of a confusion point there. Um, best to avoid that in the long line, obviously. But as Karel said, it's currently lacking a plot, mostly because there's no inciting incident and goal. Otherwise, um, you said it all already, so I've got very little else to say. We're going to the next one. Um, the, here's one we haven't done yet, Claire Bear. Oh, here we go. When the bus of an addicted fantasy gamer stops at a utopian town, he will do anything to remain there whilst resisting the unusual secret to their perfect lifestyle. Well, um, so the two big problems that jump out for me on this one is the vague inciting incident and un underdefined goal. So a bus stopping at a bus stop, but stopping at a town is not an event, it's part of the bus trip. So it's not a major event that changes the life of the protagonist and has to take action. It's, it's going to happen. That's one problem. The other problem is that the goal is indefinite. We don't know when, when is this going to stop? When is he going to uh, do anything to remain there? And for how long? For a month, year, two years, 10 years? So define a goal, crystallize it within a specific point in time as opposed to a period of time. And give it a visual, something that we know by which he's, he's achieved that Whatever it is. On the positive side, I think the um, the character is interesting. It's an ad addicted fantasy gamer, and I think there are a lot of them in this world. So potentially, there's a huge audience that will relate to this main character. Spielberg, uh, well, Spielberg just jumped on that with Ready Player One. So definitely, if that's an indication, you're in good company. Just there's by an opportunity to do better. Subject matter. Yeah. Uh, the, so the the. Near you're spot on when you say the stopping of the bus at the utopian town is very poor as a major event. We need an event that triggers a story, something that will motivate the action in this film, the action that will carry us through most of the, of the feature. So we, we want a stronger um, event here. And again, being it is utopian. So of course you want to stay there. So that, that to me doesn't contribute anything um i'd like to know what the hurdles are i'd like to know why this utopian town may not be as utopian as it seems because that's what makes movies interesting we've seen you know movies like um the island or going further back um, logan's run where characters live in a seeming utopia but there's something wrong with that system and then that comes out in the course of the of the film maybe at the midpoint Maybe at the midpoint, um, the fantasy gamer realizes that he or she wants to get out. That's a he here, yeah. So, yeah. Um, the, and that's a, getting out is a, is a, has a clear endpoint. That's not an open-ended goal, because here again, you're spot on when you say remaining there is indefinite. Movies do not work along that sort of objective. You have to conclude it. And if you have a midpoint reversal, where they're trying to stay in becomes trying to get out, then that may work. And a good example um, structurally would be One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, where McMurphy, first half, half of the film, is trying to stay in, and after the midpoint reversal, he's trying to get out. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a, another element here where it needs more. Like, it's not a, like you said, I don't think it's original enough because we've seen the utopia on the surface and dark interior premise already Stanford wives and uh, even Truman show to some to a certain degree um, so it's, it's it's a trope and as a trope it needs to be combined now with something unusual to make it sellable I, I just don't see yeah the, just the very basic of U utopian town which is yeah, yeah it needs more so it's kind of what I'm getting at a genre crossover would make this work really well that was three thanks wow. Neil We've got plenty more where these came from. So uh, we're hoping to see you back very soon again. Cool. All right. Thanks for having me. That was it for now. We have covered uh, most of the log lines now that didn't make it into the live stream. 
You can still continue to submit your log lines to the website, loglineit, logline.it, and uh, Near Shelter and I will continue to review your log lines there um, just you know, by writing the review instead of doing it here on video. I mentioned immersion screenwriting earlier on. You can find the link to that online screenwriting course down below the video. It's not your typical screenwriting course where we teach you tricks that you then have to replicate. No, it's a course where you learn by doing it gradually over the course of six months. And it's a hell of a lot of fun as well. That was it for today. I would appreciate if you would subscribe, click the subscribe button and join that um, little club of almost 200 members now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.